Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Leanna. Today we're going to be talking about confirmation bias. And let me start the conversation by asking you a question. Have you ever gone to Google to confirm a fact? You probably have, right? But what if you went to Google to confirm something that was less fact-based, more about feeling and experience? What if you heard somebody say something and you didn't quite agree with it, so you want to back up your own feelings and experiences? That's kind of what confirmation bias is. You go out of your way to validate your own experiences and disregard everything that everybody else has gone through. And this can be very dangerous. So let's say, for example, you've seen a doctor and the experience went really, really well. You got on well with the doctor, the doctor treated you well. Later on, you find out from other people that they didn't have the same experience you had. Maybe that doctor didn't listen to them, didn't hear their experiences, didn't care for them the same way they cared for you. Maybe they discriminated against your friends or family members. And you think to yourself, well, that didn't happen to me, therefore it can't have happened. And this is where we run into a huge problem. Some people will go out of their way to confirm what they know rather than what they don't know. So this experience with the doctor that you had is perfectly valid. It happened to you, but the experiences that those other people had are also perfectly valid. And going out of your way to back up and validate your experiences rather than listening to those around you is not okay. <laughs> this can lead to a term called gaslighting. And gaslighting is often thought of in, in a way that's uh, in intimate relationships. Gaslighting is basically thought of to be between uh, intimate partners and sometimes in business relationships as a manipulation tactic and an emotional abuse tactic to make another person feel like they're going, uh, for lack of a better term, crazy. So one person will kind of slowly but surely build it up in the other person's head that they're exaggerating about something or something that they know that they've experienced has never happened. Or, or they'll drop the subtle hints like, I told you I needed that report on my desk by Thursday. I told you that last week, but they never actually told you that. And in your mind, you know that, but they're manipulating you into thinking that it's all in your head. But this tactic doesn't just work in interpersonal relationships. This tactic can be used anywhere. And so imagine that you are a person of privilege living in a privileged body, talking to a person who is in a marginalized body, possibly multiply marginalized. And you're taking your experiences of what you know and placing that onto the marginalized person. And you're saying, well, that's not what happened to me. And therefore that's not what happened to you. And you're gonna go out of your way to undermine that person until they think that what happened to them never happened. That's abuse. And basically what's going to happen is the person living in a privileged body is going to keep running around in circles around the marginalized person saying that they have no say in this situation. Uh, your experiences don't matter anymore. I have all the say in this. And I don't even have to tell you how wrong that is. So privilege is a, a very intersectional thing. 
uh, a straight person is going to have more privilege privilege than uh, a gay person. A cisgender person is going to have more privilege than a transgender person. A skinny person is going to have more privilege than a fat person. Uh, an abled person is going to have more privilege than a disabled person. A white person is going to have more privilege than a black, indigenous, or a person of color. And so on and so forth. So what you're, what happens when somebody goes to that doctor and they live in a white, cisgender, heterosexual, skinny, uh, upper middle class body. Do you think their experience is going to be the same as somebody who is disabled, gay, trans, or non-binary, black, or Latin, or Asian, or indigenous? No. And so then it's not, it's not the authority of the privileged person to say, if it happened to me this way, that's the way it is for everybody else. And that's why it's not okay for any of us to presume that all experiences are the same and to try to validate any experience we have by only looking at it from our perspective. So I think you can see where the problem lies then. So do you know what confirmation bias is now and how dangerous it can be, especially today when we are being fed so much media that is biased? This can have a huge effect on our Google algorithms. If we are only looking from one perspective and we are only looking to satisfy what we think we know and not what we don't want to hear, then of course we are only going to be fed the same information over and over and over. And that's why when you ask somebody to Google it, it's not going to work because they've already been Google searching the same sort of thing over and over. They're not going to get the same results that you do. So that's also something to consider when you ask somebody to look it up by themselves. It's probably better to send them a link. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. I would love to hear from you and keep the discussion going. As you know, I don't post on schedule anymore, so I will see you when I see you. If you want to keep subscribed for updates and videos, then you can click the button down below. And if you don't want to, that's okay too. I have all of my other links and info down below. And I'll see you very soon. Bye everyone.